even looked at it. I literally walked in the door 20 minutes ago, swallowed some food down, and just... I'm sorry, man. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> I'm literally just like... What up, Roundup? Hey, yo, Daniel, that is the life of a content creator. <laughs> you work... I, I'm, I'm telling you. Work, 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 work. Boom, camera, camera, camera. camera, camera. Work, 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 work. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, that is the life. Of, I'm learning that that is the life, dude. Because uh, Patrick, remember he had the studio in his office. Uh-huh. So he gets to work, 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 work. Come out of the office, camera, camera, camera. I'm t Daniel, man, unfortunately, dude, that is the life of a creator. Oh, God, it's, uh, I'm going to go live right now on Instagram, right? Hit now. it, yeah, hit it. I'm going to go on you. Round up, come on, nah, come on in, come on in. We are uh, honored to have you. Uh, wow, one of our members here, Andre Lewis. Thank you so much for supporting our channel. Round up, if you're interested in becoming one of our members, you get your questions answered first. For my busy professionals, they just want a little something extra, a little just, something. Uh, so everybody, I'm we're going live with Chris Haskins as well on YouTube as well. Him. If you want to go on to, I'll mute him so y'all can. Uh, He's going on his Instagram. Guys, it's chrishaskins.com on YouTube. We're going to be talking about how to estimate how to estimate uh, renovations so that when you walk into property um, and you're thinking about buying that property, it's instantaneously, quick, right? Quick. It's, um, it's all about you know being able to do your numbers quickly in your head, give them an offer based on those numbers, shaking their hand, outbeating everyone else, that's behind you waiting outside the door, especially if it's an open house situation. Uh, we're waiting for Chris to come on. Uh, once once Chris comes on, <clears throat> we will uh, go live on both channels, uh, sending him that, that invitation right now. <clears throat> so guys, but if you really want to see all the breakdowns that we're going to be doing in a format uh, type, uh, feel free to join Chris Haskins' YouTube channel. But we're going live both on Instagram, my channel, Instagram, obviously, you know that because you're on there, as well as um, going live on Chris's YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to load the volume on this side, Chris, so that this yeah, is hard. I'm about to, uh, for some uh, reason, you can't even turn it all the way down. We'll get it straight, though. Yeah. But guys, again, uh, you, you're off on the, on the you got to get more in the picture, Chris, hmm? on Instagram. You're off a little bit. Uh, a little bit more and then you'll yeah you go so guys again we are going live on instagram as well as on chris haskins youtube channel if you want to go onto his youtube channel because there you'll be able to see the the excel sheets um when we break this down um or the i'm gonna get my headphones i'll be right back there yep. i'm gonna get my headphones, so get that, get headphones on so i'm gonna get my headset then I'll be, I'll be right back go for it brother um, so please join us on, on, on Chris Haskins YouTube channel for those of you that want to actually view the actual uh, PDFs as well as the Excel sheets. And again, I can't get over how many people are, are here watching us right now. Thank you all for joining us. I am humbled to be here. Um, I'm just excited to be sharing all this information with you guys, to be honest with you. Uh, this is the first time that uh, we're actually going to be doing something like this. Chris, actually, where we're going live instantaneously on YouTube as well as Instagram. So we're just having some technical difficulties right now with Chris Haskins uh, headphones. But uh, by all means, if you have any questions, um, you can put them here in this format or you could leave them in the comments section of uh, Chris Haskins uh, YouTube channel. <clears throat> so while Chris is getting ready, fixing his uh, technical difficulties here. Let me get my headphones in here, one second. There you go. Hold Again, on, guys, on, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate all this. Uh, wow, Barrero Lending, you're on here. Thank you. Uh, so Barrero Lending is actually a team out of New Jersey. Uh, we were just chatting, I think, on Monday. No, Friday. <clears throat> so thank you for being here. I really appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, and for, again, for all of you that want to go on to and get the pdfs while you you know while we're talking we're going you could visualize it as well as the excel sheets uh go to chrishaskins.com on youtube and you'll find it there and again thank yeah, you yeah. i just want to let you know this is the first time we're doing a live instagram and youtube all at the same time so it's like 
<laughs> if there's any technical difficulties here, give us a break. You know, show us some love. Be yeah, blame. Yeah. Dan, what um can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you really good, man. Thank you. All right. So I'm gonna give you have to come. You have to come to the YouTube channel to get my goodies. I'm gonna give you my construction estimator. My construction estimator is like 30. Matter of fact, I should let me see. What does it look like? Look at what it even looks like. So again, if you go to his YouTube channel, you'll be able to get the construction estimator. Um, and yeah. that would be extremely helpful for all of you that you know haven't been doing this much or just starting to do this. I mean, it can't get any better. Literally. Mm, let's see. Literally. He's going to be putting that up shortly. And again, guys, you have any questions? Feel free to ask, man. Remember, I've been doing this since 1989. Um, I've actually used my own hands to do this kind of work. Um, I don't use them as often as I used to use them because as you begin to grow, uh, you begin to realize that it's cheaper for you to pay somebody to do them. Uh, yep. not, notwithstanding the cost of labor and material that's happened to us in the last two years. Uh, two and a half years, um, which Chris what do you mean? Was talking about. Oh yeah, stuff's going yeah, up. Chris, I'll tell you, like two by fours, you know, seven thirty-five for two by four. Mm. Uh, in two thousand eighteen, two thousand seventeen, I was paying a dollar eighty-six to a dollar ninety-six. It was know, going up as long as we bought that in bulk, right? Uh, one by threes, which are um, fair. I I consider them to be fairy strips. Um, where I used to pay 89 cents for an eight foot one by three. Um, when I say one by three, they're really one and they're really three quarter inch thick by two and a half inches wide. Um, I used to pay 89 cents. Those things are now costing me two dollars and fifty cents. Uh, it's still going up. Tell my six. people that don't understand that, Daniel. Tell my people that don't understand. You're just talking about a dollar too. Help them under understand that that's a little bit more about those small margins. Oh my God! It could add up to it. it adds up dramatically per square foot. Um, so, and depending on the size of the property, so let's say it's a, it's a, let's say a single family home that could add another 15 to $20,000 on the job. Mm -hmm. Easy, easy. Easy. So, you know, these are the things that you all have to consider. I mean, including myself when I'm doing, when I'm figuring out what my costs are, and I'll give you another example. Um, back in 2017, 2018, I was paying for sheetrock around you know, five eight sheetrock. I don't use half inch. Um, about ten between eight seventy five and ten eighty a sheet, depending mm -hmm. on the, the amount that I would buy. Right. Versus today, I mean, we're looking at fourteen dollars a sheet. Sometimes as high as sixteen dollars a sheet. And then the same thing with green board. So green board, for those of you that don't know, you put that in bathrooms, especially because it it's which it sustains itself much better against mold. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. The green board on a five eight is like between eight seventeen fifty and nineteen dollars today versus two and a half years ago. Um, actually, I'm sorry, five eight sheet rock was between eight forty. Regular sheet rock was between eight forty and ten dollars versus nine seventy five for green board to eleven dollars a sheet. Um, and versus that today, it's at you know eighteen to nineteen dollars. That adds up to a lot of a lot of money because one sheet of four by eight sheet is only thirty two square feet. If you got to do fifteen hundred square feet, well, I wouldn't even say that because all the walls yeah. you're looking at about fifteen hundred square feet. You're looking at thirty thousand square feet. It's a yeah. lot of money, guys. So, you know, these are the things that we all have to take into consideration um, when yeah. we're doing our estimates. <clears throat> um, why because it increases your expenditures which decreases your profit margin if you don't figure all these numbers in before you actually give the offer on that prospective property that you're trying to buy are you ready right, to go yeah. chris yeah i'm just listening yep. i'm learning to round up listen the greetings class greetings my name is chris haskins my mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. And doing that, I get to share uh, unbelievable people. I like to hang out with people that are richer than me, that know more than me, that have been in the industry longer than me. And today, you're going to get to hang out with one of my mentors, Daniel Barrera. What up, homie? What's happening, Chris? Me, your that, mentor, I doubt it. You're my mentor, man. <laughs> yeah, we both learn from each other. That's why yes, I like it. We do. 
Yeah, you hang out with people that is called inter, and we're interdependent. Nobody knows everything. That's right. So roundup today, uh, as I was brainstorming, what value could I bring to you? There's several things very fast I want to show you. Uh, if you want to support my channel and help us to continue to make co uh, content like this to raise your financial literacy, the link is going to be below to join the channel. It's for my busy professionals, people that don't want to necessarily wait until the end of the presentation to get their questions answered. You can join that at any time. It's like nothing but a cup of Starbucks coffee a month. And here's one of our members here, Andre Lewis. Andre, thanks for supporting our, our channel, my friend. The other thing is below, you can download the construction estimator. It looks like this. It's in the video description as well. It's going to show you everything that you need to do regarding doing a renovation, right? I mean, yeah, literally, I'm going to give you shit. How much did I, how long did it take me to put all this together? Good God, help me. How do I zoom in here? Oh, here we go. Round up. So you got decking floors, driveways. I'm not going to go over all this, but you got exterior here, interior, appliances, basement, cabinet doors, decorated electrical fixtures, all this stuff here, everything. This is your tech. This is your uh, text that you use for the contractor when you hire them. And it all adds it up here at the bottom so you can put it in. Roundup. I'm giving you this for free. It's in the video description just for hanging out with us. One, because we love you. And Daniel and I both want to, both want to see you succeed in this business. We didn't have this stuff when I started out. Well, let me ask you, Daniel. I, I, you, I didn't have this. And it, your, your actual Excel sheet is extremely detailed, uh, much more detailed than mine is. Because, uh, But I don't really use mine to give it out to anyone. It's more for my in-house use. Um, but this is something I would definitely give to, to anyone who asks, uh, especially if they're not in the business for a while, because this this is definitely like many of these things. I actually combine them together, uh, whereas this is extremely much more detailed and it, it's easier to understand. Well, I don't use this. Obviously, uh, Daniel, tonight. our mission for tonight wasn't to get you to learn how to break down every dollar. You know, you just right, right. can't do it. But when you hire a contractor, you better break down every item. Yeah. But the night was more. So let, let's do it. Let's frame it up, Daniel. I like to teach like on the fence, right side, coming up with the numbers, which tonight we're teaching, coming up with the numbers very quickly. Mm -hmm. Left side of the fence, hiring the contractors. I'm telling you, Napoleon Hill says that, uh, the detail, the detail. Daniel, just tell them about how you um kind of look at it on the right side, you doing it quickly. And then you trans, then you kind of uh, switch gears and get on the left side to go over the, all the details, Dan. So when I walk in the property, there's certain things I'm looking for immediately. I'm looking when I'm walking up to the property, if it's not a flat roof, if it, assuming it's a roof. house, right? Roof. Um, many of many, every most, I would say a lot of people here are primarily looking at single family ho homes or two yeah. or three family homes where they have the mm -hmm. pitch roofs. In my long-term homes, they're usually flat roofs. So I can't see that unless I actually get on the roof. Um, yep. So when I'm looking, when I'm walking up to the property, especially if I'm driving up to the property, I try to find the highest point on the street. So it gives me the view of that property. And with time, you'll get the experience of being able to see or realize how old that, that roof is and whether that roof is going to be uh, needs just cleaning or is it that it actually needs to be replaced. Um, and then it, depending on where in the country you're at, um, there's, different, there's different price points, uh, different costs. So what I always recommend is you know, you could Google that. You could go on to uh, there's plenty of uh, apps that will give you um, estimates, especially if you go to the Home Depot app, because they take into consideration when you put in the zip code, the labor cost for that particular area. Um, and they also figure in the permit cost. OK, uh, actually, no, they don't figure in the permit cost. There's other apps that would. Um, having said that, you know, well, I just want to give them a snapshot for now. And then I want to tell them. So you're looking at roof walking through it but I and then i'm know. looking okay. the next okay. thing i'm looking at is the windows i'm looking at the exterior foundation uh there's a lot of vegetation next to the foundation that worries me because that me that could be causing uh water filtration um i'm looking to see how much dirt is against the house how far the gutters are running away from the house so that the water from the roof runs away from the house doesn't fall on in a dead smack alongside of it because that could create termite damage so i'm looking mm -hmm. at all these things before i actually go into the property so when wow. I do go into the property, wow. I'm looking for the problems that may be occurring as a result of the problems that exist outside the property. So funny you say that because um, in real estate, we have like just like with your health, you have the the cause, but then you right. have the symptom of Correct. the cause. That's the a great effect. way of putting it, Chris. Yes. <laughs> the <Yeah>. effect, <laughs> which will kill you. Right. You're yeah. working on the effect and the damn cause is up. Right. 
Yeah, go exactly. there. I'm sorry. Yeah. So no, there's, and then of course I'm looking at everything else, right? You know how cluttered the house is, because the more clutter, um, the easier I try to make it for the seller. You know, I'll, I, I'm telling them you could just leave all your garbage behind, or I don't tell them it's garbage. Of course, your personal items, whichever you don't don't no longer need or desire to keep, and I'll get rid of it for you because we're trying to make this as easy for them as possible. But yep. there's a cost to that, right? So I know what it costs me for a 30 yard dumpster. Because we do business in New York, Florida, and New Jersey, so there, you know there's a there's a there's a big price difference between a, let's say a twenty yard dumpster in New York versus my twenty yard dumpster in Central Florida. It's about three hundred dollars a, a dump, right? So you know I I have to know what my costs are because as well as what my labor costs are. So in in, in Florida, because it's a right to work state, my labor cost is a lot less inexpensive versus what it is in new york or new jersey correct so mm -hmm. i i know what those costs are if you don't know you have to know what your costs are even if you're going to give this to um a contractor to do and you want them to do everything from beginning to end you want to know what your costs are because if that contract is coming in and charging you 100 percent over what those costs should be then you're getting robbed right yeah, my my rule of thumb is 35 percent, 35 to 38 percent that's my rule of thumb. So I know what my costs are. I know what my costs, if I did the job myself, I know what my costs are, you know, what it costs me per sheet for pop, you know, for, for, for putting it up, um, per sheet per, when I say per sheet, that's sheetrock, what yeah. it costs me per sheet on sheetrock that includes, you know, uh, purchasing it delivery, you know, what it costs me for the pounds of screws that I'm going to use what it's going to cost me for each tub of compound I'm going to use, what it's going to cost me for the labor to put it up. I know what those costs are. So I know what his numbers are. And if he's coming in at 50, 70, 80, 90 percent over what those numbers are, I'm not giving him that job. So I'm going to job it out myself and, you know, and, and be the general GC if I have to. But I try not to be. Hmm. Somebody wants me to, I'm trying to turn my volume down. Talk to me, Dan. Um, one, two, say one, two, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three. Can you hear All right, me? we're good. All right. Good. Sorry about that, y'all. Yeah. We're trying. It's our first time doing this craziness. We're, yeah. we're just... So, guys, I I got you know a lot. Um, many of you, if you're just starting this, I don't recommend getting one of those um, programs that, that you could actually input it all into and it gives you the numbers. Heck, no. uh, because if you do that, you're never going to learn the basics. Uh, so I recommend you understand what the cost is of cost of material is understand what the cost of labor is in that in your particular area understand what that general contract is going to be paying and workman's comp workman's disability and liability insurance um you know because they got expenses that you may not be accounting so you need to understand the other side of the table what his numbers are to determine whether you're getting a decent number or not mm -hmm. so round up i wanted daniel because he's been doing this longer than me daniel you're, uh, it's funny. You, okay, so I'm, I rearranged my thing here a little bit, and I want you to tell my roundupers. Just give us a brief, just quickly. I yeah, know my sure. mentor <clears throat> been in the business like you. When he he left and came back, he was doing full renovations for twenty five thousand. Tell us just how about how things have changed over the years, Daniel, regarding pricing. Oh my God, um, pricing was pretty much steady. If it went up, it went up with the rate of inflation three percent a year, something to that effect. But uh, as a result of the lot that we us losing is Chinese trade war. Um, and I think a lot of the manufacturers took advantage of that opportunity and, and, and increased their prices to their re realtors, uh, their, their re retailers as well. Um, you know, I'm not really sure. I think it's a combination of both. Um, and of course, COVID um, closing down so many factories. So there was less material available. Uh, because they, a lot many of these factories closed down for two months, three months, four months, right? And when, then when they did reopen, they weren't allowed to open with more than 50% of their workforce, right? So there's a shortage of material as what that adds to it as well. So, and I'll give, I'll go over it again. I mean, I'm, I just wrote these numbers down just, just so I could have them as a reference. So I could like cost the material, uh, like cost of two by four today is 735 versus what it was two to three years ago, $1.86. Wow. That's not a hundred. That's not two hundred. That's a three hundred, four hundred percent markup, right? Wow. Uh, sheetrock, where you know five eight sheetrock, I was getting it between eight dollars and nine dollars a sheet. 
um, now it's at between 13 and 14 and a half, right? Or 15, uh, depending on the quantity that you buy. You know, flooring is the same thing. Like, um, uh, and I just actually, I was just dumbfounded today because I had to buy subflooring today for one of a small job that we're doing. Mm -hmm. $43 a sheet for cool, subflooring cool. Uh, plywood. That's a four by eight? Uh, yeah, and that's the tongue and groove. I used to pay no more than $21, $22 a sheet. $20, um, 14 here. Guys, it's just, re it's just outrageous. It's 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 just, uh, you know, through the roof. So, you know, you need to know what your numbers are. And you need to know what your numbers are versus you doing it and paying a contractor, right? Because when that, then when that way, when you get your estimate from your contractor, you know what his numbers are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course he needs to make money. He's not doing this for free, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you don't want to get robbed either. So here's my last renovation, y'all. We thought it was going to be... Uh... 60 at the max look at this let me go to the bottom now we added some other stuff in here that we shouldn't i mean there's some other things but round up let's zoom in for you this is literally the one we just sold last week Seventy-eight thousand we spent this is on a regular ass let's say back out maybe four thousand so uh we y'all stuff is going up up and I don't want you to go in here and make these offers. You know, everybody says well, I can get it done cheaper. I can get it done cheaper. I want. I, I am not the guy that wants it done at the cheapest price. Daniel, no, um, I don't want. I don't want a contractor that comes in and says he could be there tomorrow because that means he's got no demand. Why does he have no demand? Um, and so I set up my guys week. If I know if I'm closing on a property, you know, in two weeks, three weeks. I'm walking through that property or I'm sending him videos or pictures of that property and I'm giving him a list of everything I want done. So his, you know, the numbers are pretty damn close to what it really is. It's very rare when they, we walk in there and the numbers different because we found something different. Um, so and I don't want to take the cheapest guy uh, because you, it's always like, well, I didn't include that. Or there's always a problem with the cheapest guy. I, I don't want to take the most expensive guy either. Um, but usually the middle guys is the one that works the best. Hold on a second, Dan. Yeah, yeah, sure. One second. Hey, Ty. Yeah, we, uh, my wife's in there. We're we in here. Thank you. Mm. All right, bye. Sure. So, you know, again, you know, this, I'm not going to, yeah. if you don't mind, Chris, I'm going to recommend a book. Um, Go ahead. This book here, it's very simplistic. Um, What's the name uh, of it? It's estimating rehabs rehab costs. It's by J. Scott. Um, it's the revised edition. So if you go on to you know uh, uh, Amazon, get the revised edition. It's very simplistic. You could read this thing in maybe a day and a half to two days. I actually read this while I was on the plane last time. Um, and you know going to Florida, um, mm -hmm. where I do a lot of business. Sweet. And actually, while I was waiting to, to board and while I was on the plane, I was done with it in a couple of hours, in a few hours. It's very simplistic, but it's extremely, um, it, it's it's great for beginners or intermediate uh, beginners. Uh, it lays it out really good and, and what you should be looking for. But I got to tell you, Chris, that Excel sheet you put out there is more detailed than what's in the book. Um, but what he it does give you, he does give you some really good guidance in reference to how to find what the court should the course should be in every specific area it doesn't matter where in the country you go to yeah and round up i want y'all to know we gotta get rolling you're never gonna get it down to the dollar don't beat yourself no. up and i mean daniel's been doing this i can almost predict that daniel's been wrong let's say more than he's been right yeah i i and there's no doubt about it because i you know because what we don't sometimes we don't uh, properly estimate what i call the might as wells right mm -hmm. so i'm doing this uh, you know what i might as well now do that so this right. there's more upgrades but it's usually and i don't i don't ever go wrong with estimating what i may find behind the walls so like i said when i walk into that property if i see the gutters falling right on right next to the house and they're not leading away from the house i'm gonna meet and then i could tell by the greenery the mold that's behind the, the gutters or alongside that foundation i immediately know they got to turn my problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to, depending on the square footage of the house, is what determines how much more I'm going to add for 
um, my my rental costs for when I ripped out those walls, I know I'm going to find termite damage. I'm going to have to replace two by fours or two by sixes or maybe the seal, things that you don't see behind the wall. Actually, that happened to you, Chris, on one of the jobs. I remember you sending me a picture <laughs> asking me what the, what I thought this was. And I immediately told you, right, that's termite damage. Termite damage. Yeah. Hey, you know, guys, <laughs> at the end, of, and once again, I want you to know that Ronald Grant told me when you have these problems, it's nothing but a check. Termite damage, a check. Wood rot, check right. you know you just write a check and make it go away so i don't want you to get scared because i used to be so scared getting into these houses oh god what am i gonna it's just a check right just pay yeah. for it get it done get over exactly. it, right? you know there's, there's a lot of things you could see when you're walking into the property from the outside that give you an indication of what you may find on the inside yeah you're saying that so roundup go ahead and download in the video description here is my construction estimator this is not we're not going to tonight the purpose was not to go over all the details which to kind of give you tonight daniel and i wanted to get you moving get you out of analysis paralysis so you can estimate repairs quickly this is not what you use to make your offer i right. better not catch y'all oh my gosh if i catch you doing this stuff before you make an offer daniel what we're gonna do we're gonna hit you over the head. What take out that sledgehammer you have, Chris? Just oh yeah, show sledgehammer. Yeah. Show sledgehammer. They're gonna get hit over the head with. <laughs> He's got this great sledgehammer. That's a great promotional tool, and I, I gotta tell you, it's awesome. There you go, Chris. <laughs> so guys, you know these are all. Everything on this Excel sheet that Chris is providing, it's everything you should know prior to you walking into that property, not after you walk in the property. You want to know what your costs are. You know, you want to get a minimal, you know, you can't do it if you don't own the property, but I try to always get at least a minimal, I'm new to the area, uh, three estimates, uh, minimal, sometimes six estimates, depending on who comes, right? Um you know, if I'm not new to the area, I'm like, I'm solid. Like, you know, if I'm in New York, if I'm in New Jersey, Central Florida, I know what the numbers are. I don't need six estimates. I know what my contract is supposed to come in at. And if he doesn't, guess what? You're out, man. You know, I'll, I'll call six other guys. Hopefully two to three will show up. Give me an estimate. They get the job. You know, whoever's the most reasonable. Good. So Roundup, I'm seeing some people are asking for the spreadsheet on Insta. You got to come to YouTube. I can't put links in Instagram. You got to come to the, yeah, to the channel. Go, give them, tell them how to get there, Chris. You just go to Chris Haskins. Uh, matter of fact, just go to YouTube and, and go to Chris Haskins. We're right here live, right on the channel right now. Um, this is what it looks like right on YouTube right now. You're going to see this. I don't know if you're on Insta, but this is what you're going to see. The, the We're going to go over the spreadsheet right now, but you can yeah. download it. You better have you, you best to have your estimator because let me tell you what happened to me. We got to get into this training. What happened to me when I first started? I thought you gave. Oops. I thought you gave the key to the contractor, and he went inside and told you what needs to be done. No, I thought he just said, okay. That's what we need to be doing. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Did you do that, Daniel, or did you learn the hard way like me? I learned the hard way like you did. You know, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I got robbed so many times. Yeah, um, me too. Me too. Uh, because I didn't have this platform. I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have Instagram. I mean, we didn't have Facebook. Um, and then the guys in the business kept everything close to the chest. They didn't want to share anything, right? No. Um, you know, if I had had this program, if I had a mentor, if I had, you know, oh my God, I, you know, I would have, I, let's say I would have spent 30000 on, you know, over the all the years uh, between mentorship and, and programs, I, I would have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, really? in mistakes. Yeah. So, um, Let's do this for the top round up. Go ahead and get you uh, the construction estimator is in the description. So roof, what is your number? I'm going to tell you my number, Daniel, then I want to know what numbers you are because my renovations are costing me like between 50 and 55. Like that's just where we at right now. How many square so, feet is that, Chris? It's like 15 to 1600 square feet, Dan. Okay. So I don't even calculate how much that is a square foot. Do you do it like that? I do and I don't. Um, so I do have a formula that I really rather not share because I don't want it's it's something i don't want to be held responsible for but what i normally do is depending i have a i have i know what it is per square foot on the exterior but then that mm -hmm. increases or decreases depending if i got to replace windows or sidewalks or you know so i start with one general number for exterior and then i start deducting uh if i don't need to put a roof if i don't need to put the windows if i don't need to replace the concrete you know then i start deducting but that that's my square foot 
perk built gotcha. in course. Same thing on the interior. Gotcha. So with the roof, do you have enough? Well, I mean, we started five, like five to fifty-five, five to six thousand on roof. That's what we're spending nowadays, Dan. Yeah, that's pretty much. If I'm at a, if I'm in a job in in Florida or you know in New Jersey, it's a little less actually. We've been used been using the same roof guy for about ten years, so he gives us really good discounted prices. Um, yeah, but you can't change the price of shingles and gone up. No, okay. well, right, that goes up. So, but in comparison, he his labor really hasn't gone up. In com- you know, it, he, he's been staying and in, in put with the price of material, but he hasn't hit me over the head with labor. Um, gotcha. That's about what it cost me, what it's costing you in, in Central Florida when I'm when I'm, we're uh, turning over homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in, but what we keep in Florida is mostly condos and townhomes, so that doesn't really affect us. But it gotcha. does affect us on the fix and flips. In New York, that's about what it's costing me as well. Believe it or not, uh, maybe a little bit more because of uh, workman's comp. It's a lot more expensive here, mm-hmm. uh, about 10% more. But having said that, it's pretty much in line. However, if it's a flat roof, then it's a different animal. Um, I never did a flat roof before. I don't think most of our viewers, well, I don't know my viewers, Dan, then I know they're not going to be doing a bunch of flat roofs. Right. Well, flat roofs you? usually you see in the city environment, and that could be a lot more expensive because it's usually a lot more um uh, labor involved getting that material up to the roof because they're taller buildings. The rows, those rubber roof rows, could weigh could cost weigh about 70, 75 pounds. Um, you know, it's ex- and they're torched down, so the ex- insurance is a lot more expensive to that uh, to that contractor. Um, buyer. Yeah, yeah. So let's say we're just round it. We're gonna round it this ballpark and round up. You don't have to have it perfect, okay? You don't gotta get it perfect. Just get it close. This is one thing that you just have to get close. We're spending three hundred dollars a window, Dan. What you spending on windows up there? Well, they're going up a little bit now, but oh yeah, it depends on the quality of window, right? So I try to put in the aluminum stronger windows instead of the vinyl because they last a lot longer and they have a less less um, uh, difficulty as she, as tenants. Because here in New York, remember, a lot of the issues is because uh, people put in window units. In the summertime, mm. the ACs that creates some damage, right? Um, so I try to go with them a little bit more better quality windows. Uh, they're running me between six and eight fifty, six hundred and eight fifty. Okay, so Dan, whereas in Florida, they're costing me about three fifty. Yeah, let's change this to three fifty. Yes, it went up. It was three. It was two ninety. Then it went to three. Now three. So I need to keep you in Florida. I think the majority of our my viewers are going to be in more of the Florida ish price range. Dan, um, windows, why do you care? I'm like, well, I'm doing a flip. I'm putting in a window, a vinyl window that's $150 to $180. Why do I care? $200. Bucks. Why do I care about putting in a more expensive window on a flip? Well, it depends on the flip, right? So, you know, it depends on the area and what, what's your real number, right? Because you also want to remember those those units are going to be, whatever that flip is, it's 99% chance that it's going to be inspected by a professional um engineer right Mm -hmm. so it's like a kitchen okay i'm not going to put in a fifteen hundred dollar kitchen or two thousand dollar kitchen with for mica cabinets in an area where the average kitchen cost is thirty thousand dollars uh with your granite included right Mm -hmm. and then expect to get the same price that i would get if i had put in the that that type of material right so it's the same thing with windows you know if you're in an area that's calling for three hundred and fifty thousand dollar a house, then you could get away with those vinyl windows. If you're in an area where you're getting six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars on a flip, you know you better put in the better quality stuff. I see. I you know see. it depends on uh, you know th- they're expecting it for those numbers, right? Well, you got a whole other thing. So I need to put windows here, depending on pr- depending on price range. Right. But I would say if you know the house is under three fifty, yeah, I would I would say three hundred and fifty dollars. Do that under 350k. I've never even done a house over 350, so I'm like, you in the whole other ballpark. So we'll come back to foundation and termite kitchen, Dan. I'm spending well up until now, which is going up, but just roughly, I'm spending 8,000 cabinets. I just that's the number that I put in there. Obviously, we have a lot of different things that are that are built in. But yeah, and, and you, it depends. In my case, if we're putting it, remember, I do a lot of condos and townhomes. I could do a kitchen for 3,500, 4,000 dollars. If it's okay. a if, if it's a it's, if it's a single family home, um, believe it or not, I get even my kitchens brought in from New Jersey because I could go to the same distributor that represents that manufacturer in Florida, 
and it's going to cost me two thousand dollars more before without not even you know even though i'm sh paying the shipping costs it's still two thousand dollars more wow so it's all about creating relationships with your um distributors and your vendors so whereas you would probably spend eight thousand i'm looking at about six thousand gotcha but that's only because of my relationship right um so again so would i would probably go more in your case eight thousand dollars but i'm assuming eight thousand is that including your appliances no i got appliances down here okay so you know eight thousand dollars and i'm assuming that's with the rewiring of the kitchen putting in uh you know uh, recess lighting putting in um you know more outlets around the counters that's well what i do here dan i just do like a blanket only i add the majority of the electrical work in the kitchen okay then i put extra stuff down here right the three thousand i would say that's for the rest of the house that's not yeah for, yeah so i, I kind of right. make it because once again we're trying to get in and out i'm like okay right. boom, yeah. boom, boom. so I, I would say eight thousand dollars but that would have to include all your recess lighting that would have your additional gfi switches I'm good with that um yeah. on your counters and a back decent black splash with granite counters kitchen know, in uh, right kitchen soft, done. soft closed drawers yeah all right let's do this so hvac dan hvac i used to get a whole house done for forty three hundred dollars yeah the now different animals. Like so in florida it's costing me now for one of my units which is still not a bad price in comparison because of the again because of the relationship that we have a one bedroom unit could cost me uh 27 2800 um if i do that in a in a two to two to three bedroom unit because of course the tonnage increases you're looking at 3500 and if i look at a 1500 square foot house i'm looking at about 6500 dollars yeah that's it i'm gonna go ahead and raise this up there <clears throat> I just couldn't believe it. I did one. It was almost like this happened overnight, Dan. I remember I, I'm like, I'm getting them down to 5,000. Next thing I know, 6,500. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. That stuff went yeah. to the roof. Yeah. It's outrageous. It's outrageous. <clears throat> That's right. the are other you thing. And you, and you also should know the quality of what you're buying. So, you know, a lot of these guys are putting in the aluminum coils on the condenser unit outside. And they, they're telling you it's, it's a better system, but in actuality, it's been my experience. It turns out to be a, a, a nightmare. Um, what is that, Dan? Tell them about that. So the inside of your condenser outside, you know, I try to stay away from the from the guys from the manufacturers that it went all the way over to aluminum because everything I've read has been a lot of complaints about it. Um, so I try to stay with the copper. So there's very few guys that's the bigger guys that are still using the copper. Like Green uses the copper. So if I'm going to replace something, I try to use a ream. Ream, okay, gotcha. Yeah, you know, you want to you want to do your research. I mean, Google is the internet provides you all the opportunities to do your research so that you know what the hell you're buying. Because at the end of the day, guys, if you're fixing and flipping, you want your names attached to that fix and that That's flip, right? right? And you back. want whoever buys that house to tell whoever they whoever they they talk about that house to. Well, I'd buy from Dan Barrero, Dave Barrero, USA Land Ventures any day of the week because if I had a problem, they called me and they under everything was still under warranty and they arranged the contractor to come back. Um, and and then you want them to also say I had no problems, right? So mm -hmm. this is you know your name's attached to that fix and flip forever. Um, and if it's a rental, you don't want to go back and do the same job five years later or seven years later mm -hmm. because you were too cheap with the quality of the material that you bought. That's then what's the purpose? You're losing money. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going. Round up, make sure you get you can download my construction estimator in the video description. You're gonna get all not this one, but you're gonna get the Mac Daddy. This one here. So, so yeah, if some guys are asking, guys, if you want that spreadsheet that Chris is talking about, go to the YouTube channel that yeah, you got on live right now. Chris Haskins. That's all you gotta type in. And you can and just you download it automatically. It's easy to get there if you don't want to go to YouTube. Just go to my Instagram, go to my link tree. It'll bring you right over to the live. Yeah. This is what you're getting, y'all. I'm, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you the game. I love it when OGs oh, say, I'm, I'm giving you the game. Oh, game. God. You're giving it to them right that With that sheet alone, that's worth, I don't even know what that's worth, yeah. but it's it's worth thousands because it'll save you so much work, work and so headaches. You're going to go detail. You're going to know what, where, what Daniel and I tonight are just estimating the repairs. But this sheet here, this is extremely detailed. Is when you go, we walk. I'm telling you, dude, you better walk through with your. I'm going to read one to you. 
Uh, let's see, electrical. Discuss keeping electrical boxes to install new receptacles. Uh, oh, sorry about that. But I can't highlight. Let me highlight this one. I'm just read one. Guys, if you want any of the vendors I use, uh, feel free to uh, send me an email at danielbarrerojr.com. I'll be more than happy to share that with you. danielbarrerojr.com. All right, I'm sorry. danielbarrerojr at gmail.com is my email, email address good. and i'll be more than happy to share those vendors with you just be specific which one you want right again daniel barrero jr at gmail.com sweet uh round up, oh here's one of the um here's one of the items I had to talk about keeping the electrical box install new receptacles switches keep existing wires where possible install wire over the microwave oven stove hot water heater garbage disposal dishwasher repair all bad electrical wiring install gfci you see where I'm going with this, y'all? You know, you? let me ask you what you don't have in there, and I highly recommend you put it in there because a lot of uh, homes, if the person that bought it was new new construction, the contractors don't want to, you know, to save money, they don't put in the those uh, receptacles in the ceilings. You talk they about uh, what receptacles? You talk about the recessed lighting? Well, no. So, like, not, uh, we bought a lot of property where. You could turn on the light, but you need to switch, and it turns on lamps instead of having the light in the middle of the ceiling, right? Oh, yeah. So do you that. have that in that as well? Because I didn't see that. Well, no, this, this, this is for a house. I mean, I didn't need to, this particular. I remember this house. It already had lights, but that is a big one because they got to bust. They got to pull that wire up. Yeah, because they got to pull don't have lights. They don't. So they have to put them up. They got to pull the wire from the outlet itself up to the ceiling. And sometimes they could. it's easy to do because you go through the attic and just punch a hole down. Yeah. That's but what make sure that the that 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 uh, electrician, if not the electrician, the carpenter, resupports that box up in the ceiling part because a lot of people put fans, right? And you want yep. that fan, you want that electrical box to have the support it needs to hold up that fan. Got to have that your uh, box in there. Okay, Daniel, I'm doing four thousand per bathroom. Yeah, that's, that's that's decent. So we got two. HBAC. And again, that's all depends. So in my case, I could do a bathroom for under twenty five hundred if I'm not if I'm not rearranging any of the plumbing. Um, but it also depends it. on how how high end I want to go. Um, and if it's in New York, it's probably about four thousand dollars because New York prices for labor is a lot more money. All right. Siding, you all, Dan, we, I'm spending like around five thousand aside a house. So in, in our in our Florida properties, we really rarely ever put up siding because it's mostly a uh, uh, stucco and cement homes. So it's all there. It's all about painting, and it's costing us about twenty five hundred dollars to paint the house. Um, however, okay. um, in New York, that's going to cost you closer to uh, twelve thousand if you were to do so that side. Twenty five hundred. Yeah, we don't have. I've never painted a house. Yeah. Again. <laughs> different market right well you're right you have a lot of siding um yep. well you know if in the florida we, we're using mostly uh, uh stucco and some and there's some cement block houses and then of course in new jersey 1500 square foot house is going to cost us more than, than five thousand, closer to between 10 and 12. for stucco no for siding oh, for, so oh okay. your siding is very inexpensive there i guess um good lord but remember we need to our insulation here has to be much thicker because of the cold that we experience versus what you're experiencing there. Mm, gotcha. Round up, if you're just joining us, I'm hanging out with uh, Daniel Barrero. We are just going over how to estimate repairs quickly. We're not getting into the complete nuts and bolts because we don't want you to spend a lot of time there. We want you making offers. Don't worry about, like, you're going to get my estimator, but you do that after your offer is accepted. These numbers here are before your offers, and we'll get to questions at the end of this one on IG as well as on YouTube. Get your questions in, and members' questions will be answered first. Members' questions answered first. So we got electrical here, Daniel. How about your flooring? Flooring it also depends, and you know, and I'm and I keep telling you, I'm giving you different numbers because I want you guys to understand this is imperative. It depends where in the country you're working. If you're in the Midwest, your labor cost is a lot less, right? So you have to know what your numbers are within the macro, um, I'm sorry, within the micro part of of your area. You wanna know your specific area, what that what the labor is for in that specific area. 
Um, so when it comes to flooring, it all depends. You know, if I'm putting down a vinyl flooring, which is really uh, common today, um, yeah. you're looking with with the cork, with the soundboard underneath. So it's like if we're doing this in a condo, I, I don't have a choice. I got to put that soundboard underneath. I'm looking with material and everything about 650 to 750 a square foot. So that's um, how you got 1500 Yeah, if I'm going to do the same thing here in New York, I'm looking at, depending on the quality of the vinyl, because a lot of the vinyl, you could get it with the cork underneath, which is also a vapor barrier. Um, if you, you know, depending if you're doing it on slab, I highly recommend you do that. So you're looking at about uh, $8 a square foot. So we're going to, I'm sorry, we do the windows that uh, we're just going to do for our, for our, our um example here, Daniel, I'm going to do our, we had 10 windows. This yes. this for our example. I don't want to make it too difficult for me. Yep, yep. 22. So, so let's say your flooring is five to 6,000. Yeah, I would say sometimes even more, right? Because if you're putting in a wood floor, then it's even you more. Do that? Right? Yeah, well, it's very common in the Northeast to put in uh, wood, wood parquet floors or oak flooring strips. Um, no, it's you know, it if, you, if they're existing the already, material. just if they're existing already. So, if you want to sand them down to the bone and then you know, give it a, a sealer, a stain, and then minimal two to three coats of poly, you're looking at about 450 a square foot. If you're installing it, um, I would tell you to get the stuff that's already comes treated, it comes with a much harder finish. You're going to be paying six dollars to eight dollars a square foot, but the the finish is done to perfection because it's done in a controlled environment in the factory. It's it's just it's just a much harder finish and much more less scratch. It's much more scratch resistant. However, if it does get scratched or beat up, it's you could just sand it down like you normally would a regular wood floor. I remember that Dan. There has been one time in my career that I've actually installed real five eighths hardwood floors. And when I saw how much it cost just to buy it was five dollars and fifty cents a foot, and I'm thinking to myself, a thousand square foot. Yeah, that's five thousand dollars just in material. Yes. In material. Yeah, and then so you got to add out. on the labor that another three dollars a square foot. So it, it, it's it all depends, and that's not easy work to do. And you need somebody who understands Specialist. and appreciates wood. Especially yeah, oak wood, because oak is difficult do. to work with, man. It's extreme. It's a hard wood. It's uh, it's it's unforgiving if you make. That's a why mistake. we don't do. Yeah, I just want to do. We do laminate. If anything, I do laminate or that luxury vinyl plank. Right. All right. Let's keep going here. I can't even use my calculator. Plumbing. This is just extra plumbing, Dan, because we already got plumbing built in our kitchen and our bathroom. I usually just put another two, three thousand for plumbing just under the uh, house. So do I. I normally add, uh, depending on the size of the house, right? If it's a one bedroom unit, you know, uh, one it depends. Bedroom. So again, because I do a lot of condos, townhomes, uh, and I'm trying to give you the simplistic numbers. So in no Florida, doubt. for instance, if you I walk into a unit and I see copper, I already know I'm probably going to have, and depending on when the property was built, if it, if it's more than 15 to 17 years old, I am ready accounting. I'm going to have to replumb that unit because copper in the state of Florida, well, in central Florida, the acidity in the water eats away at it and creates pinholes in it. So right. I got to go in there and re replace that with PEX. So I'm figuring a one bedroom unit is costing me 2,700. Between, depending on the size, between 1,800, 1800 and 2,700. If I'm looking at a 1,500 square foot house, I'm figuring that at 6,500 um, just for okay. that. But now if I'm in New York, different animal. Um, these guys are getting fifteen hundred licensed plumbers are getting fifteen hundred dollars a fixture just to move a, just to move a fixture, even Good. if it's just two uh, feet. Tell so, them what a fixture is, Daniel, so the people that don't know what a fixture so is. So, for instance, I want to walk into a bathroom, right? I want to rearrange the entire bathroom, but I got to do this with permits, right? Because otherwise, the city's on my back, and the and every fine is a minimum of five thousand per fixture. So that's fifteen thousand dollars if I do this without a permit. But the plumber's going to charge me fifteen hundred per fixture. Because he's got to write that off as well, right? So that's forty five hundred dollars, and that's not even including the finish work, right? Good so it all God. depends where you live, and rather where you intend to do this business in. Like I said, guys, know your area, know what the labor costs are, know what the the the, the, the laws are in reference to whether you got what you got to pull permits for, what you don't have to pull permits for. 
and that'll make wow. the difference. So if you if I'm doing this in Florida, a fifteen hundred square foot, your plumbing, yes, I would agree with. If I'm doing that in New York, I'm going to tell you absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the last two, y'all. This is just, uh, Ron Legrand says this is just under miscellaneous. I'm just going to put two thousand. This for framing for stuff that just what Daniel would you say stuff that's got to be done. I mean, you got floor and yeah, the you know, yeah. Assuming you're not ripping down many walls or yeah, adding much structural differences. Yeah, that's that's a good number. So I'm I'm spending two dollars a foot for paint, including materials. So fifteen hundred square foot house is gonna cost me three grand. So I'm gonna leave here at twenty five hundred. Oh, that's exterior. Oh, I'm sorry, interior. Dan, what are you spending for paint? A lot more than that. Spending more than two dollars a foot. Yeah, I'm up to about three and a quarter square square foot now. So you're just spending shit forty five hundred. Yeah. Let's say I'll put three thousand to forty five hundred here. And 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 that's that's my that's what it cost me in in Florida. Uh, New York, it's high, New York, it's higher. It's more like five fifty to six dollars a foot. Mm. So once again, y'all, this is just ballpark. You go and get your offer done. You might be off a few thousand. I promise you, you're gonna be off. Don't worry about it. Yeah, look, guys, when you're doing your estimate, whatever you do, add another twelve percent to it. That's a good idea. That keeps you safe. Let me get my calculator here. Add this up because I can't use it while I'm on the phone. That keeps then you I got, safe. I got ten percent left on my uh phone uh, okay well if we lose you we lose you what can we do if uh plus 30 oops five thousand for those of, for those of you that you know if we lose chris because of his battery and like i said we may have technical challenges which i'm a little surprised we we didn't have as many as i thought and i'm sorry about the echoing on this we'll try to fix that next time is it still um, echoing right now i don't think so I haven't heard that complaint. I, think so. much. I turned it down. Yeah. Um, but for those of you that, you know, if you want to get this, uh, the Excel sheet and the PDF that Chris has given away, go to the YouTube channel, uh, Chris Haskins. Uh, all you got to do is download it. It's absolutely for free. It's extremely detailed. Um, you know, it, it's literally going to walk you through what you need to look for um, when you're when you're getting estimates and what you need to look for when you walk into the property. Yep, this is it. Yeah, and he's actually it's it's an incredible uh, Excel sheet, which I, I wish I had. Mine is not as detailed as yours, Chris. I may make mine as detailed as yours. This stuff, you know what's weird, Daniel, when this stuff adds up? Yeah, and look, guys, I like I said, that. you always have to add. I normally added another 8% for what I call might as well as, you know, the things that I wasn't accounting for. But since I, it looks so pretty here, let me do it there. Um, you know, one of the jobs we just did, we put in, we really dressed up this one property this summer in um, in New Jersey where our intent was just to put in the shadow boxes in the dining room. So we had, we, we put in the six inch floor moldings with the five and three quarter inch crown moldings. And then we put in the three and a half inch uh, chair railing, right? And we said, well, you know what? Let's put in some shadow boxes in between the chair railing and the six inch floor moldings and it came out so pretty and it, and we had made it an open floor pan, plan we were like you know what we did it here we might as well now do the the, the living room and the living and the, and the family room and when we did it there we said you know what came out so damn great how can we not do it going up the stairs right so all these true. things were the might as wells it's so true. what what we normally do is we add another uh between eight and twelve percent depending on the square footage of the house but what we call might as wells and then I'll add another 10 to 12% um, for the overruns. Mm -hmm. So I'm going in there with real, real conservative numbers. If those might as well don't appear and those overruns don't appear, the profit margin is higher. Might as well. As, uh, I haven't done one where they don't appear, Dan. What do you mean? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, they just may not appear as, as prevalent as other jobs. <laughs> Round up. Let's get to uh, welcome our new member, Norma Ross. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It is, an, it is an honor to serve you. It's an honor to serve you, my friend. Get your questions in. Uh, Andre, one of our members, what is the max that I should pay for light rehab? That's going to be on Daniel. He's good at that. I don't do light rehabs. When you say light rehabs, what does what that consist of? That's Meaning no, no windows, no kitchens. If you're slapping paint on a wall, depending paint and on. Paint flooring. You're still yeah. at 10,000, right? Yeah, pretty well. Again, fifteen hundred square foot. Yeah, uh, you know, 15, it depends. 000, What's light? You know, um, that's I, true. You'd have to be a lot more specific with that. We'll get to a question on uh, Insta next. 
one of my members, Roslyn. Hey, Roslyn, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Dan, thank you so much for providing. The, yeah, you're right. Dan is the man. <laughs> thank you, Roslyn. You got thank a you. instant question, Dan? Uh, I, no, we've been answering them, believe it or not. As oh, you know, okay, they, they were up there, but we've been answering them without even realizing we were answering them. So, guys, yeah, if you guys, do guys have any Instagram questions, please, you know, put it in. Chris and I'll be more than happy to to answer those questions. So this no, this 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 presentation here was like fifty five thousand. That's with no foundation, no termite. So just keep that in mind. Do you get a termite on every one you do, Dan? Before you buy? No. Because remember, when we going in, I'm buying as is. I don't care if there's termites. I'm assuming there's termites, depending on what I see on the outside. So all that is figured into my to my rehab costs. You still I'm, like to well, you want to know what's going on though, right? Uh, I, you know, Chris, I've been doing this so damn long. I, I could I could I could see what when you when you've been with the termite inspector, you know, <laughs> 12, 15, 20, 30 times. Why are you paying the guy to come out there and do yeah, it that's when true. you've been with him all these times? He's as he's finding it he's telling you you know why he thinks it's there so these are the things that you know when i go into a property i'm walking in with an ice pick right and most people are looking at me like is this guy dangerous and i know because i'm testing the wood i want to see if you know the seals have been termite uh infested or if they've been compromised as a result of termites those are the little things i'm looking for i'm looking for the mud lines you know that termites leave behind there's True. so many different clues the, the outside like I said earlier, if I'm walking into the property and I see those gutter leaders just falling right right where the foundation is, and I see green mold all alongside the bottom of the foundation and dirt against that wall, I know there's termites. I don't need an inspector to tell me there's termites. Now it's just a matter of the severity of those termite uh, issues. Well, the, let me ask you, Dan. I do a termite every time we do a house because let me. Oh, I want to. Well, where you're where you're at, Chris, you have to because you you, you have a, most of your properties are wood frame houses, right? Where, humid. Where, humid. where where I'm at, and it's very humid. Where I'm, where, you know, my Florida properties, most of them are built, you know, made out of cement uh, block, so it's a different oh. animal. So if well, there's an I issue. The issue is more with the framing, not with the foundation or the structural issue. Well, I want my roundup is to know that, listen, guys, the, every both of us, Daniel, just like the NFL, have different teams. We all went into we're trying to win, right? So no, no coach is wrong for their team. But I want to know exactly what's wrong with that house roundup. Hit me real close. The termite inspector, I want him to tell me what's wrong so I can fix it and get a clean termite when I go to sell it. Okay, this is so, true. so guys, and I got to agree with you, Chris, there's many times that I walk into a property, depending on the situation, especially if I'm in a new area that I'm investing in, I'll go so far as even to get an engineer's report, because yeah. I want to know what the next engineer is going to come and be looking so, for. So let me knock this out. Um, but what I do is sometimes while I'm doing the work, my partner and I will have get what we call a soft engineer's report. Where What's we don't day? need we don't need a detailed engineer's report. We wanted to come in and say, "Listen, if I hired you to, when I was if I was buying this house, tell me what you would tell me what you would write up." And he'll go through there it. Go. He's going to give it to me in a simplistic email. He's not going to go crazy making a whole reporter for it, and it's going to be about half the price. And I'm doing that so that to avoid any potential issues when we do find a seller. There you go. So when you find your seller, you are my thing is I want to know. How many times I bought a house at the end, termite come back something? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. So hey, guys, oh, if you haven't done this as many times as Chris and I have, yeah. I'm gonna tell you get a termite inspection and get an engineer's report. There you go. Don't right. go cheap with that, just get it Spend done. Spend the money. Spend yeah. the money. Oh, really? 88. Would you guys buy a lot and build a duplex or keep looking for one to come up for sale in the saturated market? Dan. Um, I hate building, it's not my forte. I don't, I don't, it's <coughs> only because, especially in New York, it's what they put you through as far as um, insurance, that insurances that you need and, and bonds that you need to cover. Um, but, you know, I have built, uh, I'll build in Florida. Um, I may build in Jersey if I had to, if there was nothing on the market. I haven't had to do that in a long time. Um, gotcha. I know Chris does it and, and Chris doesn't seem to have a problem with it, where he lives. It will build. But I don't know about building a duplex to keep it because it just costs so much to build. I mean, unless you got financing. See, the thing with I like buying existing structures, the value is already there. You got almost even if you have a house built to ninety percent, 
your value is real low because you don't have a certificate of occupancy. So right. remember that. Eleanor, what up, homie? What up? Please. Uh Daniel, how do you how do you deal with helping hands? How do you deal with capital gains? Pay. Uh, so in my case, when we're doing a fix and flip, there is no capital gains. Why not? Because, you know, because it's less than two years. Uh rather oh, less you than one year. Right. So it's considered it's considered income earned. Um, earned income, okay. Right. But it's all about how you stru structure your identity, right? So That's right. I don't do my fix and flips do under my LLC. I'll only do them under my as corporation because the tax structure is totally different and it's a less tax it's less tax implications if gotcha. i'm doing a long-term hold i'm going to buy that under my llc so it all depends uh one what state you live in speak to your accountant speak to your tax attorney and make mm -hmm. sure you have the right identity as far as whether it be an llc or a corporation to do That's what you want to do Rich Therese said he sent both of us a deal and wants to know if we want interested in partnering. I'll check my email. Dan, check your email on that. Yeah, I'll there. do that tonight as well. Yep. Help with hands wants to know how do you hold your property, Dan, in a land trust or no? Well, I don't do anything in a trust. I know Chris does a lot. And again, it's all because, um, listen, guys, everyone's got different, uh, we're in all different uh, fi fin financial levels. Yep. Uh, we all have different. Uh, ways strategy. to getting to the finish line not to say that one is better than the other but that's what works for me so no i don't do anything with a land trust uh for multiple reasons uh for for, for le legality reasons as well as tax reasons primarily tax reasons uh, gotcha. but i know chris does a lot of, of trust would you want to you want to tell him yeah that, we chris? do that. somebody else wants to know what type of trust we'll see dan's in new york and they just y'all just funky up there man yeah <laughs> what type of trust you hear we use land trust is called a grantor revocable trust my friend helping hands i hope that helps you right there uh eleanor what's the average price per square foot when you're reno I don't do square foot. I just go five ten, like the one you saw. Yeah, right I, I don't do square foot. I just, I, I think I do actually okay. do square foot, but I, I don't. I'm afraid to give you those numbers because my square foot, uh, for like my southern properties are a lot less than my square foot for my uh northeastern properties. But what I do is I said earlier, this is my number, and then if I don't have to do the roof, I know what that costs me per square foot. If I don't have to do the sidewalk, you know, cement work, that I deduct that. If I don't have to do the electrical, I deduct that. So I my square foot starts at a much higher number by the time I, I'm at the end. I work it backwards, right? You're so doing I'm that for a specific work. reason, though, Dan. I feel like you're doing that for you. You have a, a a methodology to doing that, right? So I change and I, and it's been changing literally every three months because the cost of labor and and and, and materials gone up so dramatically over the last thirty six months, right? But so it literally I have to go back and revisit that what it costs per square foot every three months uh again to account for the increase of material and labor um that we've been all incurring throughout the whole entire country for the last 36 months so i work it from this is this is if i have to do everything that's on chris haskins excel sheet this is what my number is per square foot and then everything i don't have to do i start to duck because i then i know what it costs me per square foot for laying down a uh, porcelain tile what it's going to cost me for painting what it's going to cost me for kitchen what it's going to cost me uh per window what it's going to cost me per square foot on yeah. the roof so i can start deducting that so i go worst case scenario i would you know if i was you guys i would use chris haskins excel sheet worst case scenario and then anything you don't have to do you could work it backwards if you know what that section costs you per square foot gut is like installed that. Um, like that, that way when you get to your bottom number it's done so round up, I'm here with Daniel Barrero. We got 103 people on here with us now. 120 with Daniel's on there. Uh, download my construction estimated contract, y'all. It's right here. You're going to get it. This is what you need after your offer is accepted. Roxy, show the contractor submit a detailed estimate similar to my spreadsheet. I'm going to let Daniel go. I mean, I know what I'm saying. Say that again. Should the contractor submit a detailed estimate similar? Yeah, I, I actually always have the contractor come in and, and give me a detailed uh, description on what he sees. Because believe it or not, sometimes they see something I may have missed. Um, mm -hmm. And then I compare that to my own notes. And then I determine what's what 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 work we're going to do. Yeah, I guess you could let them. You know, Daniel has been so long. I've had a con there. You know, it's weird. Yeah, I, I am under the premise that there are a lot of guys better than me. Like, you remember that, y'all. People are better than you. Yes. Especially at doing what you do. So let them do it. And then you have your own one and you can compare 
But I tell you, I'm, I want to know. I'm just under the philosophy that nobody cares about your house more than you. Nobody. No, they don't. Listen, guys, and, and if once you create relationships with the right contractors, a lot of them are going to already know. Like, for instance, I do a lot of condos in Florida, right? And I do then here I do a lot of apartments. Um, I don't I I I do fix and flip. I do do single family homes, but I do fix and flips. But that's a different animal when I'm going to renovate a single family home because I'm not doing that for long term. I'm I, it's all about the aesthetics and I'm putting in good quality fixtures. Like I'm not putting in uh, the cheap fixtures. I'm putting in Deltas or American Standards, um, right? So, but the point is that it, it's all more about the aesthetic look, right? The feel when somebody walks in versus right uh, an apartment that we may have that we're looking i don't do high-end uh finish work as far as you know i'm not going to go out and i'm not going to put in a twenty thousand dollar kitchen in in a condo that we're renting absolutely not right um if i was selling it i may depending on, on on the price range in that area so it's i i guess you have to determine that according to what the thought process is or what your goals are yeah so yes every time roxy yeah. And again, I, again. So my but the, one other thing I wanted to make my my contractors, the guys that have been me a while, they already know we're gonna go in. We're gonna we're gonna change all the toilet seats. We're gonna change all the shower heads. We're gonna you know we're gonna paint the entire apartment. If it doesn't have six inch floor moldings, we're changing that. We're putting in six inch floor moldings. Uh, you know, if it has popcorn ceiling, we're, we're taking down the popcorn ceiling. We're retexturing. We're, we're putting in all the LED lights. You know, they, there's certain things that go without saying that are going to get done. So In Daniel has that luxury. They, right. Roundup, you do not. I'm telling you right now, you do not have the luxury. You need to make sure you go over everything. I do not presume your. I'm telling you, right. do not presume your contract is going to do. See, Daniel been paying these guys forever. Yeah. Again, don't assume the contractor is knows more than you. Um, expect him to know more than you but don't assume he knows more than you i would let him a lot of times especially with new contractors we tell him go and show me what you guys should do here somebody else i like that i like that and a lot of times you'd be great you'd be surprised they come up with great ideas they do yeah. no link is not active uh steve if you don't see the link in the video description just refresh your praise i got up i put it in there i put it in there kind of late sorry about that <laughs> Silverman Fox, do you know where I can get an estimate for new construction in New Jersey, Essex County? That's Daniel. I have no idea. Uh, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to send you uh, someone. That's nice, uh, Dan. Send Daniel Barrero Jr. at gmail.com. That's nice of you to do that, Dan. Yeah, I don't have no problems with that, man. I do what I can. Yeah. <laughs> do what I can. Uh, who is zero? Andre, thank you so much for supporting. Garth. You got anything coming in on your side, Dan? I can get take one of yours. No, I, I, again, it's it's funny. We've been answering them all. <laughs> if you buy, oh, you answer them in, as, as you're talking. No, Garth, we, you and I are answering them as we're as we're talking without okay. realizing it. Garth, if you buy AC copper coils, then you must secure the AC because people will steal the copper. Dan, is that? I haven't had that experience, but it, it, you know, I could see it happening in, in certain areas. Yes, um, without a doubt. On the low, Dan has he knows people. You might you might not want to mess with Dan. <laughs> Thank you for doing this, guys. You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome, you, Andre. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. You're welcome, my friend. I I love bringing Dan on. Wujun, Dan, did you estimate vinyl and hardwood both at eight dollars a square foot? Depends, right? So, and it depends on on which type of vinyl you're going to go with. So, there's times that we've gone with a better quality vinyl. A, a perfect example in Monroe. County. Uh, we, we we were in New Jersey, actually, uh, property we just did. We went and got, we traveled to Pennsylvania with a flatbed, borrowed a flatbed from one, oh of, one of our vendor friends um, that we give a lot of work to and picked up a, a, a vinyl flooring with the cork underlaying to secure it against uh, the vapor barriers as well as the it, it was just a phenomenal flooring it's probably top of the line flooring where the flooring alone without the without laying it down was in new jersey and new york we were getting about 13 dollars a square foot we ended up picking that up at a wow. close out at Sweet. six dollars and fifty cents a square foot right Sweet. Sweet. so when that engineer came into that house he was, he the first thing he's told his uh the buyer was these guys didn't go cheap 
you know how much this flooring costs you know so but that it's all about buying it right and yes the vinyl and the wood depending if you're going to buy depending where you buy it if you buy it in quantity in our case we buy a lot of quantity times i buy an entire trailer <clears> and i store it until i need it and that's what reduces my my cost factors but you guys yeah. are not in that position to do that so it's all about shopping the material guys shop i want you to figure out your estimate at the retail cost and you could always go out and shop the material and save you save yourself money off of that estimate that you have for yourself you know you could go to home depot whether you guys know it or not uh, become pro members go to the pro desk become a pro member um if it's over thirty five hundred dollars if you're buying over thirty five hundred dollars in any given week you could tell the pro person at the pro desk you know you want it to go through the bid room there's times it goes through the bid room and they give you the numbers like this within two yeah. minutes um they could take off anywhere between five percent and twenty percent you know, it's 2,500 here. Yeah. Well, actually, you're right. It's 2,500. So oh, okay. there's really little simple things that you could do to shop it around. You know, call up different lumber yards, go to Lowe's. Believe it or not, even with, with even with uh, appliances, if you're buying, you know, two kitchens, especially yeah, Lowe's, they always negotiate if you speak oh, yeah. to the manager. Just um, ask. Just because Just they're ask. at Home Depot or Lowe's doesn't mean you can't ask. Yeah. Always ask. You'll be surprised. They're no. willing to negotiate. They're willing to fi find a way to give you that that particular merchandise at a cheaper price, so you don't go to another store. Round up. We're here estimating repairs with Daniel Barrero. Go to the link in the video description to download my construction estimator for free. Take it, y'all. I want to see you succeed out there. Go ahead and get so, it. Mr. Royalty says uh, you, you, you guys need some of your prodigies on here as testimonials of your teachings. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Head to the video screen. Uh, Diego wants to know, should I, how do I know what the labor prices are in my community? People Again, and contractors uh, don't tell you. you. In the beginning, if you don't, included it. If, in the beginning, if you don't know, um, you need to get estimates. Get multiple yeah. estimates. This included um, here. One of the things I do, you think you may you may laugh at me about this, Chris. If I go into a new area, I'll stop at the Home Depot and see what the guy the day laborers are charging me a day. Ah, uh, sweet. Yeah, that tells me that gives me a huge indicator. You know, if the day laborers are charging me a hundred bucks a day, that means a contractor costs. You know, if I get Hello. somebody to work, hey, how are you? Uh, you know, how are you? How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> You better she, get some braces. She's the one that likes the camera, huh, Chris? <laughs> we should get her braces, man. They slacking. My entrepreneur is slacking over here. All right, here. No. Yeah, day laborers give you a great indication of what the you know average uh, labor is. Not be because whatever they're getting, add another fifty dollars to that per day. Day laborers, guys. That's people that you pick up in the truck and they work for the day and you drop them off. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that, Dan. I didn't know that. Yeah, again, those are the things you pick up in the business and you figure it out as you go along, man. Let me figure it out. Uh, what is it? What about foundation? Quentin Smith. We did not go into foundation on this. It's just so much. Yeah, uh, foundations is something that you want to visualize, but your engineer's report will should be able to pick that up for you. If you knew, I'm gonna say don't even mess with it. Just leave it alone, man. If yeah. it's cracking up. Yeah, if it's if if you're new to the business, it's extremely stressful. So I would reconsider. Yeah. D Dana Hammonds wants to know St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, uh, good evening. Why would you use five eighths sheetrock instead of half inch? So I use five eighths sheetrock because my properties, 99% of the time I keep them. I'm more long term of a hold. Um, so I use my fix and flips to buy my long term holds. OK, mm -hmm. my fix and flip profits give me the money to buy my long term holds. That's my cash flow. That's my generational wealth. Um, so. The reason I use five eights is because when tenants leave, it's a lot easier to patch up. Um, it's a lot easier for tenants. A lot. It's uh, not as easy for them to make a hole if they're abusive in the apartments versus half inch. Uh, the other reason is five eights doesn't wave over ten to twenty years, right? Five eights will stay flat. So no matter how many times, hell, it's heavy as hell, but it doesn't wave. So if you constantly had to like spackle and you know patch up, as long as it's done right, it stays smooth and it does, you don't see the wave in between your studding between the sixteen inches of studding. That's sure. the primary reason why. Uh, that plus it, it's less noise to other apartments. Uh, it's just a harder. It's it's just.
for long term, it's better for you. And, and it's besides noise insulation, it's a lot less maintenance when people move yeah, in and move out. Good. It's all about it's all about putting in the work when you first do it, so you work less from there point from that point on forever. Uh, I agree with that. Kevin Ridley, what is the Home Depot app to estimate costs and? And you can just go out to Home Depot and type in your zip code. And I mean, I haven't used it in a long time, but the last time I used it, it was easy. So you know, you type in your your, S, your zip code and it pretty much tells you per square foot what it's going to cost you for flooring, for instance, because they're estimating the floor based on what, assuming if you walked into Home Depot and said, I want you to, I want your guys to put down this floor, this, the linoleum or the vinyl. Because remember, Home Depot has, you know, they'll put it down for you. They hire... <coughs> outside contractors but they know what they're going to charge you per square foot they know what the labor is and that you know they'll give you all the as long as you give them the SKU number of what you want to buy they'll tell you what it's going to cost you per square foot to, to install round up get over there one more question for our members this is the last question if you want to join our membership and get your questions answered first that link is in the video description y'all yeah. I'm giving my busy professionals a little something extra if you yeah, want I just your question, got reminded please. from one of my uh viewers 5h sheetrock is also gives you more fire protection oh okay cool roundup uh the membership is just a small uh, cost of a cup of coffee every month guys if you want to get your questions answered first download this uh download the construction estimator which is right here in the video description you can't miss it put your email in and you'll get that for free last question from one of our members here Dan, uh, Dan large he remember Andre was saying a uh, light but rehab is kitchen and bathroom repair for a rental property uh okay repair it all depends on what type of repair you're talking about if you're putting in for micer uh it's very inexpensive um you know and, and assuming you're keeping the same cabinetry uh again it, it's that's an open-end question I don't know if you want to paint those cabinets I don't know if you just want to clean them um, yeah. You know, it's painting. I, I, that's a question I'm afraid to to, to respond to because it's not yeah, detailed lot, enough. Man. Yeah. Sorry about that. Roundup. Don't let these repairs scare you from making an offer. Never. You guys, I got to tell you, download that estimate. The, 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 you know, uh, Chris estimate. Figure in all your numbers, what it costs you per square foot. And like I said, you, there's plenty of app, apps that you could do this on your phone. If you put in your zip code and you put in what type of flooring you want to put in, whether it's porcelain tile or regular ceramic tile, um, they'll give you the cost per square foot for, for the labor for that area. Figure that in per square foot for each one of those details. And then that's how you're going to figure out um what the maximum amount is per square foot and at that point like i said earlier when you walk into the property all right they just put the roof in five years ago i could deduct that for my square footage cost they just put that they just refinished that bathroom i could deduct that for my square footage you know I like that so you could work work i work it backwards i i figure out what my highest number is and then i start deducting what the cost are per square foot. that's cool right there dan i like that work backwards and don't try to, my thing is, y'all, don't try to get everything for so damn cheap. Be like, I can get that done cheaper. I can get that done cheaper. We're not in the business of doing one-offs, right? I want the guy to charge me what it's worth, do the job, get it done, sell the house, come back, do another one. Boom, get it done. So you don't have to always try to find that one guy that can do it. That you, don't, no. don't run your, you can't, matter of fact, you can't run a business always looking for that one dude is going to do it at the bottom price. No, because you, you, you're not going to win. I mean, look, I want the guy, like Chris said, that's going to actually get the job done within the time scope that it was, that we all agreed for him to get it done. And uh, and one more thing I'll tell you to put in to yeah. your contract, whatever you do with your contract, is put in time of the essence. Oh, yeah. Every single time. Time of the essence and put in a, a, a closing date. You know, Of course, if something comes up that you weren't accounting, guys, by all means, you know, you need to change that time of the essence date to be fair to the contractor, right? That's true. Um, That's true. But, you know, hold them accountable. But I also reward my contractors if they finish early. I have contractors that are working on a job on a Saturday and Sunday because they want that reward. Okay, you know? extra. I'm done. This thing's going right. down. Dan, thank you so much for hanging out, hanging out with me tonight. Yeah, no, thank you for inviting me. And I'm humbled to be here with all your followers uh, guys, you know, I got to thank Chris again for letting me be here. 
by all means, if you don't mind, Chris, I'm going to tell them, uh, you know, we yeah, do. Yeah, where can they get in touch with you? We, we do the free mentorship class every Wednesday. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it this Wednesday because we may have a personal obligation, but we do it every Wednesday. It's absolutely for free. You could join up at usalandventures.com. Uh, Chris and I also do a Sunday night Instagram live every Sunday where we're just talking real estate and we answer any questions that you guys may have. Um, and of course, please join my YouTube channel that Chris Haskins has helped me so much in. If it had not been for Chris, I would have never started that YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe and, and give me a thumbs up when you get there. All right, that's it, y'all. Roundup, I love you. I'm going to tell y'all, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell this week. I'm going to tell you about some training I just paid $4,000 today for. <laughs> yeah, I may be joining you on that, Chris, actually. <laughs> that call you gave me today has been festering in my head. I, I may be joining you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell you about the training I signed up for. So uh, y'all stay, mate, please hit the subscribe. And we do daily questions. These questions have really been fun. So I want to test you guys every day. You'll get, once you hit that bell, you'll get questions from me every day, real estate questions, and I'll answer them at nighttime. Round up, subscribe, hit that like button, share the stuff with other investors, people that are getting in the game, got to know the stuff. Yes, without a doubt, please share it. Good night, everyone. See you in the next Take video. Care. Okay, Thank peace. Bye-bye.